We've got a great opportunity to bounce our uh, questions off some really successful people, so we're happy about it, and let's take advantage of it. Um, today, we just got to know Sandy. Um, the other panelists are going to give a brief background just so we know who they are, but we're going to save most of the time for all of your questions. So, of course, Sandy Rosecrans, the current NAD chair. And right here to my left, we have Scott Lawhead. He was the 2004 lead chair. Um, next, we have Mo Barsima, and she is the incoming NAD chair after Sandy. And we also have Charlie Collot, who was the 2001 uh, lead chair. So Scott, if you could start with a quick background. Sure, can everyone hear me? Um, thank you, Rob. It's, it's always nice to be introduced by a fellow colleague of the Height Company. So Rob and I work together. Um, we also have one other Height employee here, Justin Clayton. Justin, there you are. Um, Rob mentioned I'm from the Height Company. We're a family-owned independent distributor in central Pennsylvania. We have 22 locations in three states. Um, this year we'll probably crest just shy of $150 million. Um, distributors have probably always been called the middleman, and I think that's exactly where I sit. Um, right in between, I believe, right in between uh, size-wise of both Sandy and Moe's company, and of course, Charlie's on the, on the other end of the spectrum. He's slightly larger. So I'm glad to be here and uh, anxious to get your questions. Hi, I'm Mo Barsima with BJ Electric Supply out of Madison, Wisconsin. My real name is Maureen, and when I started with BJ Electric, that name was too long, apparently. Everyone had a one-syllable name, and so they decided that my name was going to be Mo. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Reen at home. That doesn't fly. You're Mo when you're at work. So I've been Mo ever since. So in fact, now my family calls me Mo. So times change. I've been with BJ Electric Supply for 32 years now. I started with the company when um, you know there was just a few of us, and we've grown a lot. And we have three locations today. And again, we're in we're in Madison, Wisconsin, and then we serve basically the southern third of Wisconsin. This is my first meeting, first lead meeting. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to get to know more of you. And I am honored to be part of NAAD and all that it has offered me and how much I've grown. I don't know what more I can say other than what I already told you. So I'm happy to be here and look forward to the questions. All right. This is, I'm Charlie Collat, and uh, I tell you, it's exciting to look out across this group here because um, it's been many years since I was <laughs> sitting at the head table up here, and I was trying to think back of how long it's been but since I went to my last lead conference, and I don't think the room that I was in was quite as full as, th as this room. Uh, it's nice to have two of our colleagues here as well in uh, their very first lead conference. But you look back about, you know, Mayor Electric and who we are. Um, we're a family-owned distributor based in the southeast. Um, we do have over 50 locations. We go from Virginia um, down to the Carolinas, through Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, a little bit of Mississippi, and jump over Louisiana to Texas. Uh, we just crested the $600 million mark, and uh, we have goals and aspirations to, uh, to get to a billion dollars. And um, I think that's part of our structure will be our leadership and which we're talking about today of how we get to do that um, the other exciting thing about mayor and being a family-owned company uh, we're in our third generation of um, a family-owned business and successfully navigated going from the first to the second and to the third and in our industry that um, we're right proud of what we've been able to do from a family business of keeping that keeping that together it's Charlie. the last time i checked this the statistics show that you're 17% of the third generation owners succeed. So uh, good luck, my friend. And the fourth generation, <laughs> hey, and the fourth generation is actually working in, uh, in two of our locations today. So we actually got the fourth generation coming up. I, I won't throw a dagger, I can't take myself. We're third generation also, so we're in that boat together. <laughs> Okay, on behalf of all of us, thank you for, for being here and uh, for your commitment to the association. So we've got microphones floating around. I'll get it started with the first question, and then when you guys have a question, just call one of us over, and we'll just kind of roll that way. So uh, the first one, 
with, with Charlie and Scott being here is sort of a lead point of question, so this would be more to you too, but it's how has attending lead conferences in the past and serving on the lead committee helped you with your business relationships over the years? So I'm going first. You're going first, All absolutely. Right. Um, you know, that's, it's a good question, um, and I can say all the standard answers, and I, I probably will address those, but I'll talk a little bit about change first. Um, you know, we all deal with it. We all have to deal with it. If we don't, we probably won't make it past that third generation. But one significant change of the lead conference, I'll just put, point this out, and, and perhaps it's an indication of where we're going as an industry, uh, more so our personal desires. But... Charlie mentioned the room's a little bit bigger, and I'll also tell you um, it's a little bit older. Uh, that's not a bad thing. That's just reality. Uh, we were talking before the meeting. This conference used to be um, predominantly folks that were less than 30 or 35. It also used to be uh, almost 100% attended by spouses. And if you had a family, they were with you. So this conference and in the industry has changed, and I think for all the better. This is uh, not that spending time with your families is a bad thing, but certainly um, the, the opportunity to network and grow a little bit more in terms of leadership skills, sales skills, this conference gives you much more than it's ever given. So it's, it's nice to see it grow. Um, the things from Lee that, that probably helped me the most um, naturally, the, the ability to train and learn, uh, but probably far more than that was the networking, um, the opportunity to, to develop friendships and relationships, perhaps within, within your territory, perhaps with your distributor friends, or in some cases, competitors, um, and then, of course, with the manufacturing community. And I'll just give you two examples uh, from my time. Um, and I believe I attended nine lead conferences, the last of which was 10 years ago. So at the time, my, my first lead conference um, happened to be in a lovely place in Arizona, I believe. I think you come to Chicago now, it's a little bit easier to get to, but we were in Arizona, I believe. Poolside, on a glorious evening, it was probably 85 degrees and we were having dinner. Um, I, I just arrived and I was in a new set of Tommy Bahama shorts or something along those lines and my wife was with me and I'm casually walking walking along the edge of the pool and the next thing you know I'm in, I'm in the deep end and I said what in the heck one of my friends who I barely knew decided to push me in the pool I had no idea why I still don't know why um, but I've never brought it up to him it just so happened to be he was a manufacturer that we did zero business with I'm sure that's not why he pushed me in. He just he he might have been overserved. I don't know. Um, today he's probably one of my best friends, and we do just shy of ten million dollars with his company. And for that, for us, that's a really big number. So I only share that story because it was a tremendous opportunity to get to know someone, someone I didn't know before. And I think you guys have that that same opportunity here today. Scott said it very well. I don't have a humorous story like he does. But, you know, the thing about LEAD and about NAD and the conferences is it's really getting to know people. And what I have used over my years, it's been about 10 years since um, I've been to a conference as well. But I still keep in touch with some of the core folks that I met years ago. And I can still remember sitting in my very first conference. It was in Hilton Head um, with two guys from Southwire and two guys from Kirby Risk. And those kinds of friendships are still remain today. Uh, so I can, you know, feel free to pick up the phone and call those folks, whether they're a friendly competitor, they're a good competitor, they're across the country. Um, you need to ask questions. Um, it's a network out there. So you're able to meet folks sitting around your table and get to know people. Um, as suppliers, um, you know, it's a way to get in touch with your suppliers, get to know who they are. Um, as they progress up the chain um, in, their in their companies, you have friends along the way. So it's really about the networking. That's what it's really key. It's been for me um, in being involved in the industry. Um, it's just getting to know people. Um, you get to know, you know where they're from. You get to ch test their values. Um, you get to, get to learn about them. You know, you do, Scott talked about bringing the families. Uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting there's not a lot of families here um, because even my children ask, you know, hey, when are we going back to those meetings where all those, 
those kids were and our friends are. Um, so they still have the perception that when you know we go to these meetings, you know, they should be going with us. I was like, no, guys, y'all need to be at home <laughs> doing what y'all need to be doing right now. Uh, but that's part of what a family business will do is that we have intermixed our life and our business together so that, you know, as my kids are coming up, they think about going to these meetings as part of when, when do I get to go? When do I get to get involved? When do I get to go meet these folks? Um, when folks come in from out of town, it's a chance to talk to them. And it's building relationships where they, um, it's all about, it's, it's who you know, it's how you treat the folks that you're friends with. And that's how it makes this industry, I think, stay together. You know, Rob, if I could just add one more point. Um, we talked a lot about family and, and, and the relationships you build, probably more so lean to the personal side of the business. Um, from the business perspective, I'll just, I'll just give you one more story from LEAD. Um, and, and Charlie knows this, this gentleman, but the Hike Company, when I, when I first attended my, my first LEAD conference, we were about a $50 million distributor, and today we're three times that size. So your structure has to change. And when your structure changes, you typically need more guidance um, from a formal sense. And so we implemented a board of directors. And fortunately, I had a say to one of those board of directors. Um, and my choice was a gentleman that I met at the LEAD conference my first year. Uh, I don't know if Sheely Electrical is represented here this year, but if they aren't, their president and co-owner, David White, is on the Height Company Board of Directors, and I met him at this conference. So we get professional guidance and we get personal guidance, and it's all surrounding relationships. Thank you. Next question. Rob, I'll, I'll ask one. Uh, where do you see our industry going in the next 10 years? We're trying to figure out where we are now. I was just going to say that I don't know where I'm going to be in the next 10 days. But, um, <laughs> but seriously, I, I think that's a, a great, I don't know if we know 10 years out, but I, I'm very excited about what I see in this industry going forward. I think the technology of the products that we have to offer are so um, huge opportunities for sales and for growth. I'm excited to see more diversity in our industry. It's very difficult for us to recruit people. I think this was a big topic yesterday, too, like we're, how do we recruit people? So I think that's going to be part of the challenge. But I see the industry um, continuing to be a very vital part of the channel for the manufacturers in spite of the Internet. I'll jump in. Um, I think the industry is going to be very different 10 years from now. Um, I think that technology is going to drive, when I say technology, is going to drive the business differently. You know, the way systems are going to have to talk to systems, whether you're a uh, supplier to a, to a distributor, a customer to a, to a distributor, how we interface with our customers is going to dramatically change. Um, you know, who knows how the iPad is going to change? I'll give you a great example of technology that's, that's brewing. We had a vendor bring to us, and it was, this was a Konica Minolta, it was basically a copy machine vendor, a pen that does signature capture. So I can take this pen, give it to my drivers. When they're going out for delivery, they can scan. As a, as a customer is writing their name on the ticket, they write their name. The camera takes a picture of it. When they come back, they can either upload it from their truck or come back to, their, to, the, to the branch. And, and upload that document, I now have proof of delivery sitting in a pen. It's pretty amazing. How about a, a change order on a ticket? I can actually do a change order on a ticket with this pen. Who knows what else this pen is going to be able to do? I kind of thought iPads was going to be changing how we communicate with our customers. But here a vendor, a copy vendor, brings us a pen. So technology is, if we have got to find a way to continue to embrace technology with our suppliers you know those who hold the data is going to be keen that's going to change how we do things um, size matters i think this corporate is um, the companies are going to have to grow they're going to have to spend a lot of money on technology so as you're going to see consolidation on in our industry will change dramatically 
Um, the vendor, the supplier base is going to be changing, and consolidating in the distributor side is going to be changing. With that being said, I'd like to just uh, chime in with a couple thoughts I have, too, on the way the industry is going to change, because I think we're starting to step in there now, and maybe we don't know it. But um, when you think about the products we sell, we, we all sell a lot of the same products, and thank God we're scattered all around the United States so that we can service all of our customers. So products is one thing, and products are changing all the time, and we're out there selling those new products. We're trying to find ways to make our customers more efficient, and that's where I'm leading to. I think we're going to end up being more services as well as products, and I think our services, I think that's where we have to get our heads around. What are we doing today to help our customers be more efficient and bring a better and faster ROI to all the projects that they're working on. How can we complement their business? How can we be better service providers? I know in the lighting, in the lighting world alone, you know, now uh, they want us to stage and bring all that in and take all that cardboard off the job sites and bring all that product into our warehouses and label it and make sure you ship it out every floor at a time when they want it, no surprises, no damages. They want us to do all that now. It used to be, a long time ago, all that product would be on their job site and they would be the ones faced with all that extra labor and things. So you think about what the contractors are coming back to us with, and you think about the liability that's tied with that. Then you think about how much more it costs your business to do business with your contractors. This is evolving. It's going to be more and more and more, um, in, I think, into that arena. And I think we're going to be um, more we're going to be more important to them in ways we probably never dreamed of a long time ago. We're still going to sell all that pipe and wire and distribution products and industrial products and whatever it is. We're still going to do that, but we're going to mean more to them in another way. It's a great opportunity. 